What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. I have joined with me Josh Reef, dating expert extraordinaire. Okay, you gotta stop the jazz hands. We're, no, we're done. No. We're done. We're done with jazz hands. No, it's just that's a no, thing now. No, that's a it's thing not, now. It's really not. Next time, I'm gonna yeah. like do like a, a quick run around all the chairs right, right, and right. be like just clap no, around. No, no, yeah. No. I'm gonna do post edit like applause. No, that's okay. Yeah. Anyways, Anyways. he <laughs> he's joining me today to uh, really give his opinion on a really really. It's like a touchy subject, but it's very, very important for us to talk about. It's called hypergamy. Ever heard of it? No? Well, you're in luck because we're going to be talking about it today. And you could argue that it kind of underlies almost all, uh, all relationships between men and women, um, especially when it comes to dating. It's very, very important. And <clears throat> you could even almost argue that the entire world runs on hypergamy in a way but we'll we'll kind of tackle the whole entire concept the best we can within this one hour podcast so uh let's talk about hypergamy so first off i think the best way to start this off is to really talk about what hypergamy is and then we can just kind of go from there all right so let's just start with just defining it and then i'll give my whole like spiel on. okay yeah so the definition of hypergamy is basically um marrying up That's the official dictionary definition, I should say, marrying up a dominance hierarchy or a social hierarchy. Um, But it doesn't necessarily have to be in the context of marriage, right? Because the word monogamy technically means marriage too, but if you're in a monogamous relationship, it doesn't necessarily mean you're married. So um, hypergamy is more so uh, dating or being in a relationship with someone who is of higher status than you are. Whether that be in the form of financially, uh, whether that be in the form of um, like looking better or being more attractive uh, or being more wealthy, having more resources, re- that's really what it comes down to is really having more resources at the end of the day, right? And, you know, the hypergamy in action, the kind of stereotype is like the, the you know, the blonde gold digger that has like the rich... 70 year old boyfriend who's on his deathbed but um well no i mean <laughs> that's just not it it's more like the <clears throat> the guy who looks like leonardo dicaprio who's got the money who's got everything yeah. to package i see that yeah. as more the hypergamy because <clears throat> well i'll get into my spiel on hypergamy but i don't really see it in that context i see the gold digger ones as pushed aside like guys are like oh those are gold diggers that's one i see hypergamy as the guy who looks like leonardo dicaprio who's got a good job who makes a lot of money who's got the genetics and he works out and he's fit and the guys are like i have no shot because of that guy hypergamy is a little bit less uh obvious in the sense of yeah you're right because if it's just a gold digger then you could literally just be like oh she's just in it for the money but exactly. hypergamy they push it's more that so, aside they don't yeah. they don't view that as a loss they say well i could get her if i had money but i don't so she it's gross she went with this old guy for his money yeah, yeah. but i'm losing to this other guy who's young and good looking and has money and that's yeah. the guy i have no shot against because yeah. the guy who's old they always think if i had money i'd, be, I'd get her right so they believe they could get her with money a hundred percent because obviously she's just in it for the money but whereas what real hypergamy that i see guys talk about is that i have no shot in hell because he's got the money and the looks so even if i improve one area in my life he's gonna always beat me Mm. right and so two things i want to clarify one is that there's biological reasons behind this there's social reasons behind this and we have to acknowledge this as a reality where people try and date up but the problem is mostly you hear this from guys okay well guess what guys We're doing it too. When we're trying to date up, we're trying to date up in terms of younger women, hotter women, more less women with less drama and red flags, mm-hmm. women who are into their fitness and health, women with good personalities. We're trying to date up too. So we're hy- just as hypergamous as women are. There's no like this argument that women are hypergamous is stupid because so are we. Mm-hmm. We just value different things. Mm-hmm. That's it. And we value... Um, you know, their looks, we value their personality, we value not having them not having kids already, we value certain things in them, and then we expect them not to value things in us. Mm -hmm. So the big problem is that it's used as an excuse to give up and complain. Because hypergamy is nothing is set in stone. The idea that people, you know, that women want a richer guy, that want a better looking guy, that want a, there's all these lists of things. They want a more confident guy, but it's just attraction. It's just like everything else, the same thing, status, things like that, that we know how to portray is just elements of attraction. That's all hypergamy is, is who displays the best 
uh, elements of attraction, just like a peacock who has the best feathers, right? That's all hypergamy is, is saying like someone out, you know, women like to choose the best option available to them. It's like, seriously? <laughs> like, does that need to be said? Yeah. Like, really, is it weird? Are you going to complain that someone has 10 options on the table and they choose the best option, mm. right? Like ice cream and broccoli and cauliflower and carrots. What do you think I'm going to choose? Yeah. If I want to be healthy, yeah, but if I only have one shot at this, I'm yeah. taking the ice cream. Yep. If it's my last meal, I'm taking the ice cream, uh -huh. right? Pizza, whatever. I'm not stupid. And so like your argument is that I should be eating carrots for my last meal instead of pizza or ice cream. Mm -hmm. No, I'm taking my shot. I don't know how many shots I get. for If I want to get married, I'm taking one shot at this. So I'm going to take the pizza. It's the best option. And this idea is just a way to give up when it doesn't matter. You know, we all know that more attractive women are going to go to guys who display confidence, who look better, who are taller, who have more money. And we've, as we've discussed in our other podcasts, there are ways around that. There are ways to be uh, more successful with women than a tall guy by being more confident, by having a better job and all these other things, by hitting the gym harder. You just got to work for it. And that's the problem is guys don't want to work for it. Mm -hmm. They want to complain. They want to stay at home. They don't want to hit the gym. They don't want to dress better. They don't want to get a better job. They don't want to do any of these things that can help them out. And then the other guys that complain get a better job, but they don't learn how to talk to women. So then they get bitter about hypergamy because they're like, well, I, I got a good job. I, you know, I don't look as good as that guy. So it's hypergamy. She just wants that. Mm. And it's all, all, you know, total crap because he's literally just got a job. Yeah. So what? Yes. Yeah. What's, what's the big deal? It's stability. Women want that, but that's not what attracts them. That's what kind of keeps them there. That mm -hmm. says, okay, this guy's got a stable life. Yep. But just having a job doesn't attract women. Yeah. Just having some money only attracts a very small percentage of women. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're usually young in a certain period of their life where they like the money being thrown around. But I think guys way, way, way overestimate how many women are in it for the money. And way underestimate how many women are just want stability. So women do want a guy with a job. Let's not be real. Now I can get women when I'm in, unemployed, but I wouldn't expect other guys to. You have to be, you have to be pretty, pretty good at what you're doing, like, you know, attraction-wise, to overcome that or frame it properly. Um, but that said, you know, having a decent job, or if you work at a, not a good job, get a, go to school, get a better one, um, or or learn online. Now you don't even have to go to school; it's free. So stop complaining because. It's all about framework, especially like hypergamy, like a woman, let's say hypergamy, just job alone. A woman wants a guy with a better job, okay? It doesn't, it's not that simple as the guy who has the better job is who she wants, okay? She wants the guy who's going to have this stable life and going to have that job, even if he doesn't already. So you could be a guy who's working at, you know, FedEx. You could even be a guy working a minimum wage job. But if you're studying in your free time, even if you're not at university, if you're going to trade school or if you're working online for it, and she sees you hustling and says, I can't hang out with you tonight because I'm studying four hours for my electrical engineering apprenticeship that I'm going to do, she's going to, she going to want to screw that guy. She want to have fun with that guy, maybe even date that guy because it's ambition. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other guys are playing video games at minimum wage jobs. She'll take the guy who's studying electrical engineering and can't hang out with her because he's doing that after his minimum wage job. You don't have to have the job. Now, if she compares him to the guy with the job, he's still going to have something else going, but it's not. All it is a little more confidence and she'll take that guy. Mm -hmm. It's the ambition that she wants. Yep. Right? And so what she doesn't want with hypergamy is the guy who uh, doesn't do the easy things like dressing better. Like, like a better haircut, like hitting the gym a little bit. So those are more quick. So the guys are focused on job, 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 don't get it. She wants ambition with job, but she ain't gonna give you a slack for a bad haircut or bad facial hair or bad breath. She ain't gonna give you slack because it's so easy to fix. Mm -hmm. She doesn't expect, she's not, you know, you don't have to wait years of schooling to get that better job. That's, that's reality. You don't happen overnight, but you have no excuse for dressing poorly, you have no excuse for not being, you know, having good breath and hygiene and you don't have an excuse for, for at least trying a little in the gym or eating less to weight or whatever, at least putting a little bit of effort there. That's kind of the, the middle ground. Yep. Um, so, so my, the, yeah, those are all great points, man. Um, my biggest thing with hypergamy, I know we're pretty much aligned with this and our thinking is, I think, first of all, it's just the reality of how things are, right? So to sit and whine about it is just a waste of time anyway. But I'd actually argue 
that hypergamy for the most part is a great thing because what it really does is if you're looking at it from the standpoint of what is the best for humanity, right? Because women are the selectors of which genes get passed on, right? So if they're selecting the best genes, the most high quality men, that's the best for humanity. And if they didn't do that in the past, you know, if they just felt sorry for a bunch of, you know, omega males or whatever and just let them fuck them and have kids with them, then they would pass on shitty genetics and all of us here would probably be like these four feet tall gremlins with an IQ of 50. But, you know, we're not that way because those, uh, those guys back in the day were selectively breeded out. You know, they well, didn't get to reproduce. Well, it's not just for the species. We talked about this. A lot of times biological stuff happens for the species. It's also better for the individual because they work harder in all of these areas in life to improve the rest of their life. We talked about this problem when I got really good at dating and attraction. It made me lower mo my motivation for other areas of my life like fitness. <laughs> like I hit the gym because I, I want to be a little bit muscular. I like how that feels. I want to be, I don't want to get too fat. I want to stay in relatively good shape but that's just to look like not, not bad on camera mm -hmm. like I don't need to be in shape to get women so my drive in the gym has gone way down ever since I got that dating skill yeah. and it's almost weird in a way that we talk about all this 80 20 wanting to be in this peak of our life but a big driver and we've talked about this on our other episode a big driver for all the areas of life is attracting women and once you've solved that, it's so hard to focus yeah. on the other things yep. because you get lazy. You don't need, I don't need to be in shape. Yep. I only do it because I like to feel strong and I want to look not fat on camera. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a great realization to know that all the things that you thought were so important aren't really as important as you thought. But then again, you're, you're fired, the fire to, uh, that gets lit a bunch of, uh, under a bunch of guys' asses to really make something of themselves is that promise of women when, you know, in the future. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, you know, girls are going to pay attention to me more if I do this, this, and this. And sometimes that's the case. But also, if you get good enough with just dating and, you know, being perceived as a high value man through your interactions and things of that sort, um, then you don't have to. And what it's, it's interesting because you talked about this earlier when you were spot on when you said it is, you know, hypergamy. It's not necessarily always just um, a conscious decision of, okay, I'm going to go with the richest guy. I'm going to go with the most handsome guy, right? I think a lot of times where guys screw up is they, they project the way that they think onto how women think based on their actions, which is completely false because women and men, I know this is a controversial it thing was, to say I, in 2020, I, Right, you made a Facebook post about it, and a bunch of feminists attacked you. But men and women think differently. We have different brains. Can, can we okay? talk about that for a second? Because I made a post on this, and this was somehow controversial yeah. that I said that men and women think differently. And I thought this was ridiculous. I thought that's the most apparent thing in the universe. There's a men are from Mars, women are from Venus book. I thought yeah, that was yeah. the most obvious thing that if we thought exactly the same, we'd have zero problems communicating with each other. Yeah. That's by definition. Yep. So I got like, I got backwards comments on that. I think I said female brain, which I clarified was just a phrasing. Like obviously our brain matter is the same. Like I don't think that men's brains are bigger or smarter or anything. We have very similar brain matter, but at the end of the day, we obviously think differently, and that's a lot of that has to do with our hormones mm -hmm. and basically our framework of, you know, uh, we can't get pregnant. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, so they have to think differently. Like yep. by definition, they're smaller creatures. That's just a fact. Yep. Like I bet we could get pushback if I said they're smaller creatures. <laughs> like right? No. -uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? No, it's just by definition, and so it's just weird to me because they yeah. definitely think differently. But back to the hypergamy thing. We are on the same page as we're all trying to date up. Mm -hmm. Nobody's trying to date down. Some people settle, which does happen a lot. So they settle for, for where they're at. But a lot of people want to want to go up. Yeah. A lot of people want to date up. Yeah. And another thing too. Um, yeah, that's a fair, that's, that's such a good point, man. It's funny that that's controversial in 2020. It's just a biological reality. Exactly. You know, it's people like, like ask, your, ask a bunch of your women friends about some topic and then ask a bunch of your guy friends and then see what they say. Like, you know, if you have a, a situation where, um, you know, you, you're having, uh, you know, your friend's having girl trouble or something, you know, a lot of times if they, the girls will take the girl's side and the guys exactly. will take the guy's side because they think emotionally versus logically, right? But it, it doesn't even matter. I think like, I think a lot of this just is online. If we went around offline, we get a lot more confirmation of like, yeah, no shit. 
they think differently. Like, yeah. Why are you asking this question? Yeah. It's a stupid question. It's just it's right? just like the few outlier women who are just, you know. Well, it's not just women. Men do this too, but I think it's like people like virtue to. Virtue signaling men. Well, virtue signaling, but they like to pick a position and they like to back it up no matter what. They like to be right. Yeah. So it's not really about the yeah. argument. But anyways, back to hypergamy. I think it's an interesting topic because when like we're just using it in such a negative light when we could use it in the positive light and say, okay, how do we become a higher class social status? How do we improve those things so women will be more interested in us? And there's so many ways, especially social status, that we haven't even, you know, we probably should do an entire podcast on, yeah. on that because I have a lot more to say on that. But there's so many ways to improve your status. And then guys do it fake. They like, they like buy when they, they fake, you know, when they're pseudo millionaires or almost a million, then they start buying lots of stuff to fake that. And we don't recommend that. But you can stretch things and you can give appearances. You can rent a nice place with a nice pool. It doesn't have to be expensive, right? You can kind of, you know, you know, I'm not a big fan of all the Photoshop and the Ty Lopez fake like you have a mansion. I don't like all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if you make it look a little nicer than it is, that's what people do. Basketball players add a couple inches. That's what people do. Women push up bra. That's what people do. Yeah. So I always think everyone's allowed a little leeway to make it look a little better than it actually is. Sure. That's just human nature. I, 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 I'm I only offended about the outright liars that try and live a life that they can't afford. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so we're talking about hypergamy and showing off to women. You're allowed, you know, some guys are like, oh, I can't put my height at 5'10 because I'm only 5'9. Like, you, they, they're so, like, uh, they want to be so honest and ethical. I don't even know why. That's almost a virtual signal in itself. Like, I want to be the most ethical guy because then women will want me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so I think that's like a thing where they don't want to break any rule ever. And I'm like, chill, dude. Like, you're allowed to stretch things no one's gonna care if you put 510 if you're 59 don't put 6 1 but you could probably stretch two inches basketball players do it yeah you know like women put on makeup like we know what's up but like you're allowed to stretch it a little bit mm -hmm. you know you got a nice place with a nice pool but it's in Thailand and it's not expensive like it would be in LA whatever make it look good yeah, people don't need to know yeah, they don't need to know where exactly it is. so as long as you're not like fronting where you don't have the money and you're riding jet skis or a yacht you know pretending like you have millions of dollars i think it's okay to do this and really elevate yourself yeah um elevate your social status elevate the people that want to be around you and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy if you look like you're poor no one's going to want to hang out with you so when you're actually poor you have to kind of spice it up a little bit or at least not show those parts so then you get people around you you make a little money you move up in status and things like that i so. will say so <clears throat> a few more things let's let's address um because I think, in my opinion, with that and in the long term play, I guess that makes a lot more sense. And again, it's one of those things if you try to like raise it up too much of like this almost fake social status, then yeah. once they figure out who you really are, or what you really have, then they'll kind of leave. But but one thing real quick, um, you know, when it comes to hypergamy, like again, men kind of naturally think logically again they, they kind of project their logical more logical thinking minds onto women as if they're thinking okay well women must be thinking this they must be consciously thinking <clears throat> i need the tallest guy i need the most handsome yeah, guy yeah. i need the guy with the most money but the reality is women think much more emotionally like you were talking about before really more so the case is um they it's like do you exude the qualities of the type of person who could potentially one day become yeah. a high status man that's why like the stereotypical um you know, creative musician guy that uh, women will take in and be like, I'm, you know, I know he's broken, all this type of stuff, but he's like, he's so smart, he's going to be something one day. They'll still uh, put a lot of value on him because of the potential value he has in the future. So women, for the most part, are really more uh, attracted to the qualities that will be conducive to one day being a high quality man because they know in the back of their minds, again, they don't consciously think this, but this is just the way reality works is, you know, you might have all these resources, but for all you know, or for all they know, you just had a rich family. You just got lucky, right? You don't actually have those qualities. So if you actually do have those qualities, that's what's actually going to attract them. Now, at the same time, there's still like reality based things, right? So especially if it comes to like online dating, things of that sort, we talked about this before, they really only have your your money and looks to go off of to make a judgment, right? But if you have the qualities, if you're, you could be dead broke, and this explains why there's guys who are dead broke that have well, serious I'll, games, I'll get right? into that. Yeah. Um, 
But I, I wanted to stop for a second because we kind of lost the point in there of like faking it and things like okay. that and, fr and fronting. And what I want to clarify when I mean stretching it, the truth, because everybody does that and it does have benefits to it. What I mean is I advocate stretching to up to the point you can back it up. Mm. So if someone, if I say I'm 5'11", and they're like, oh, I found out you're 5'9", or 5'10", I'm like, so what? Like, what's the big deal? So, like, I can call them out on being petty if the gap is tiny, mm. right? And so that's why if they find out this thing or it's like, you know, um, you know, whatever, like, I have... Uh, I'm a senior official and then I'm really a vice president or something like that. You know, anything that's like I can cover for, anything I can be like, well, yeah, I stretched a little bit. Anything I can look at and be like, you're just being petty. Yeah, okay, I stretched a little bit. So I want to stretch until, I don't do this all the time, but if you want a little bit of elevation and you don't want to look, you mainly want to avoid the negative. So you mainly just don't look poor, don't look schlubby, don't look like you're, you know, don't look like you're unemployed, don't look the negatives. So the neutral is most likely the average is what you're trying to build up to if you got to stretch it. But even if you want to look above average, even if you want to show some slight status that you might not have yet, you actually get it from stretching that fakeness a little bit. But again, you should never be able to be called out on it. Mm. Meaning if someone calls you out, you just admit to stretching it and be like, yeah, everybody stretches a little. What's your, what's your problem? Mm -hmm. And you can call that on their pettiness rather than expose for, for having a mansion that you've rented. Right. So the big gaps are where you have to hide and you have to lie and you have to cover and you have to, you know, and you get exposed, you're done. Whereas if you, I'm talking about just stretching an inch or two of height here or there, you don't have to do it all the time, but it's a little bit fake until you make it to elevate yourself. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It actually works. And uh, for hypergamy's sake, I, I recommend doing it as long as it's not a big deal. It's like telling white lies. You stretch a little bit, you get away with something, you can gain some advantages, but you always can back it up because at the end of the day, if anyone calls you, all right, I stretched it a little bit. Not, you know, Would so. you say another, another good technique too is to, um, <clears throat> you know, to not even put yourself in that situation in the first place, just be a little bit more of like a mystery man? No. Where you can kind of almost be like, you know, if someone, if some girl just straight up asks you like what your job is, but you work at McDonald's yeah, or something, yeah. you could just be like, because obviously you, you shouldn't lie in that well, situation. It'll that's... come out later, but you could be more mysterious to be like, you know, no, I, cause, cause I we, work for the government. We've encountered that where it's more of a pickup artist thing and it doesn't yeah, work. It yeah, becomes sure, fake. Sure. So you only, you don't use it for that purpose. Mm -hmm. If you're going to give a fake job, you do it as a tease and a joke, but eventually you have to tell the real job or she's like, who's this joker? Yeah, yeah. You come off goofy, you come off insincere. So the, I do advocate making up a fun, stupid job because it's fun, like I work for NASA, but only as a ruse, only as a, a like, uh, you know, to make her laugh and then I'm like, I'm just kidding, here's my real job. Um, but it's just framing, it's how you frame it. So what I meant by the stretching thing is your height, is like showing pictures of your room that are better photographs than what the real thing looks like, right? How you portray yourself on social media. But if you have to tell the actual truth on something, you should, you can't fake that. If you work at McDonald's, you cannot, stretch that. You maybe can stretch the manager at McDonald's, but you can't stretch anything outside of that because you're going to be caught in a lie. That's the whole point of this stretching for hypergamy's sake is you, is you get caught in a lie, you're done. You can only stretch the truth. You cannot mm -hmm. add a lie to it. Yeah. And so what I think about, and this is massively what underlines all of game and technique is framing, is mm -hmm. putting a positive light on something that could sound negative. So Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I was about to so say it. Yeah, we have yeah. to, we so if I'm, uh, if I'm working at McDonald's and I can say, if I'm not proud of that, it's going to come out bad yeah. when I talk to her. So i got to frame it as a positive. How do I do that? Well, if I'm planning there, staying there the rest of my life, there's probably not much I can do unless I'm going to own McDonald's franchises. Mm -hmm. But I better have big ambition and I better mean it. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have ambition, you can, you can, there's techniques where you can screw girls on the side, but they're not going to date you. Mm -hmm. So these guys, you're talking about broke, unemployed, McDonald's, live in the parents' basement, lazy. They'll, there's plenty of game, and I'll go to another time, on how to attract those women sexually. But those women are not dating those guys. Hell no. As soon as they find a guy to date, that guy's done. Yeah. Right? So the only way they're going to date a guy in the ba parents' basement who works at McDonald's, and they can, it takes a lot of work and it's hard to pull off, but he's got to have a hell of an ambition. Yeah. So like I said, if he goes home and studies electrical engineering for four hours a night, you got to put in, you got to put in t Grant Cardone, 10X, Gary V style, like work ethic. But if, if he, if he's like, you know, Hey, I actually work at McDonald's kind of sucks. I get it, but I'm studying electrical engineering while I do it. Yeah. Oh, what school do you go to? 
And that looks embarrassing. Oh, I don't go to school. Well, I don't want to go to school because I'm going to save my 50K. I'm going to put it into my apprenticeship or my first business, right? So I'm just studying it online. Or I'm taking uh, local classes. So you can frame anything in a positive light. You just have to know how to do it. But if you're not ambitious, if you're just lazy, then you can use game to, 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 to screw the girl to have sex. But she's not going to stay around. Yeah. Um, and then that leads me into another thing too where you talked about the guy who's not as desirable. Women think consciously about their reputation. They think consciously about what society thinks. They want guys with money and status and tallness and whatever. A lot of that's just for the public image of them walking with that guy. And what do they do in private? They're screwing the ugly, fat, short guy because he's better in bed and he shuts his mouth and he's quiet, he's discreet, which I talk about a lot. Being quiet will help you get laid more. Uh, I was actually having coffee with this woman and uh, I was really interested in her, but we were just friends. And she, I was you know, telling me about this British guy who was 6'3 and she was wanted to date him or whatever. And she's like, I only date guys over six feet. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, but you fuck short guys on the side. And I just stared her down and she's like, how the hell did you know that? <laughs> Holy shit, I never tell anyone that. I was like, yeah, like, go on. And so it turns out, you know, uh, she has this guy who's like her, her friends with benefits and she hooks up with him on the side and he's like average height and he doesn't look good and I don't even know what his job is. And she tells me, she's like, I'm not dating him, I won't date him, but in between boyfriends, because oh, socially, she wants that image of, of dating a tall guy. She's kind of a tall girl. She doesn't want to walk around with a short guy who's shorter than her. But she'll screw him on the side. And some guys just are happy with that. Some guys aren't. But some guys are really happy, you know, just being that guy on the side. But when she doesn't have a boyfriend, she always goes back to him. Doesn't that fly in the face a little bit of um, hypergamy in general? Or So, so here, here, here's kind of the thinking that I'm, I'm thinking when I hear that, right? Um, I'm like half playing devil's advocate here. So yeah, just, yeah. Just to talk about sure, this, right? Sure. So, so, you know, would you say that hypergamy is, hypergamy is different when it comes to social status as opposed to what they truly want sexually? Like, are those two things different? Is this hypergamy only, because in that scenario, right? And I know there's always going to be different scenarios based on different people, but in that scenario, clearly to up her social status, she wanted her hypergamous nature to, you know, date up. But in, in her sexual life, in her personal yeah. life, she, it's almost like she was attracted to someone who didn't fit that mold quite as much. Yeah, so I think there's a, a few things at play here. I think that uh, the status and the image outside plays a part, and I think the actual nature of sexual attraction plays a part. But a couple things happen here. There's some self-fulfilling prophecies going on, whereas the short, unattractive guy who she's just hooking up with has a confidence level that he kind of stumbled upon, right? Because he's, he's kind of anomaly in a way because he has a confidence level in bed and all these other things that other guys don't have and he doesn't have a reason for having it. Mm. There's not there's not a you know good looks, there's not height, there's not so he's an anomaly amongst all those guys. And so she's kind of hooking up with the anomaly. I don't see that as a standard. And then the second thing is that tall, good looking guys have been complimented more. There are a, a bunch of them that are confident, maybe good in bed, maybe good career, so they're more desirable than this guy, obviously. So it depends on the woman, does she have access to a high value male who's confident and good in bed? Because she's competing against the other women. Yeah. Right? And then um, also, if she's chasing the, the good-looking guys for status, she's just going to spend more time around them. So the access to her time is going to be limited amongst the other guys outside that loop. Mm. Right? So she has to stumble away from the good-looking guys in certain areas and kind of bump into this guy who's confident and can hook up with her on the side that she may not want to date. And you know he'll pull off some sexual attraction. But these are anomalies. These are guys that are my students. Um, and if he does it right, he can still date this woman. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he's doing everything else wrong, but he's got the sexual attraction right. But if he's got a good job and he's got, you know, then those women that chase, they'll eventually date these guys. If they have a stability and decent job when they want families and things like that. He's good in bed. He's confident. She'll give up the image of the tall guy, of the good looking guy, because she wanted that at 22, but now she's 26, she's 27, she knows her clock is ticking. Some of them settle down with any guy that's like, you know, has stability, um, but they'll definitely settle down with a, a confident guy who's good in bed, who 
who also has a stability and they won't care what he looks like once they hit start hitting 27, 28 and they know their time is, is running thin. And they're also sick of the players that are good looking. They realize that the good looking guys don't commit. So they find a guy to commit. Um, and they'll even commit with a guy who's not really that all that special. Um, but they'll definitely commit with a guy who's confident and good in bed, even if like he's not good looking. So, yeah. All right, cool. So that actually leads me to another question that I just thought of. So would you say that, you know, you know everyone knows a statistic that um, in the U.S. divorce rates are like 50%. There's all these different relationship problems and things of that sort. Would you say that that's, it's possible that that is a result of women's hypergamy being pulled in two different directions based on the, their conscious mind wanting like the status and all that type of stuff and then their, their unconscious mind wanting the qualities that is expected in that type of man being you know, confident, you know, with confidence which leads to dominance which leads to being good in bed and all that type of stuff. Would you say that that kind of contradiction that arises sometimes um, is kind of the kind of results in relationships being torn up and a lot of the confusion. Uh, no. <laughs> no? Well, so I think there's a lot of factors that contribute to that. Uh, and I also want to talk about uh, local maximums in a second. Yes. But uh, what I think is happening with divorce is I think that, um, you know, I we haven't talked about this too much, but uh, monogamy is... Uh, an artificial construct in some ways and it does provide utility but it's kind of artificial so it's hard to maintain over longer and longer periods of time I mean it's hard enough for friends to stay together when they fight or whatever and then it's easier for them to break apart um, but a few things are contributing more to divorce than in the past uh, you had arranged marriages you had religious marriages so those were much more likely to stay together they weren't based on love or attraction at all they were just fixed mm -hmm. and so they were there was a responsibility there. So what, why would you ever get divorced if you're not even attracted to the person in the first place? That's just accepted as way life is. Okay. And then the other part was then there was shame in divorce when you did get love marriages. There was a lot of shame involved, the kids and things like that. So people stayed together longer. Uh, and then the third part was the male was the provider. So the women couldn't initiate the divorce because until a uh, certain point she wasn't getting money for that until the courts shifted towards giving alimony and child support whatever before that time period women didn't get anything so why they couldn't leave right and so I think divorce became um, increased when uh, it was easier to do when women had jobs that they could uh, go out on their own with and be single moms or single parenting with and you know kids were used to being raised in that environment where kids grow up fast now and they just you know okay they're they're a certain age now we can we can split up um and it just became so much easier to split that all those divorces before were just bubbling under the surface and now they're able to do it a lot more easily um and then why people get divorced well there's all sorts of different reasons i think there's reasons for men there's reasons for women um men might get sick of it and want more you know younger women if they think they can get that um, women uh, might feel taken in for granted by a man and they might cheat that way or they lose respect for him because he became a wimp or he was a wimp all along and so they cheat on him that way um, and men uh, yeah so they lose respect or sometimes they're just not compatible and they fight and they fight and they fight and then eventually um, they break up and you know some of these marriages are 10 15 20 years and that's a long time to be with someone and it's hard to maintain because it takes work to maintain that and people are you know have all these accessibility of tinder and it's it's easier to let go instead of work on something so i think that uh, hypergamy plays much less of a role than we think once the marriage is done because of local maximums so i've talked about this briefly in other episodes but basically what a local maximum is, and this applies to lots of different phases in life, is that you see the top of the mountain, the hypergamy mountain, and you see this ideal woman that you want to be with, where she's a bikini model and she's really cool and she's a yoga teacher and down to earth and she likes music, she likes you know sushi and your favorite food, and you really connect with her and she's 25 or 24 and you're in the prime of her life and you're competing with all these guys for her and she's at the top of the mountain and you're like looking at your map and you're trying to find your way up the mountain. That's what you're doing in your life. You're hitting the gym, you're doing all these things to find your path up to the mountain to get her. And uh, things are going great and going great and you're climbing, you're climbing, you're climbing and then you end up uh, at the top of the mountain 
and she's beautiful, but then over, once you get to the top, you look up and you see this taller mountain. And it's the, the beauty that you wanted is at this higher mountain, but once you reach the top of the first mountain, you met a beautiful woman. And she's not nearly as hot as the other woman. She might be cool, she might be not, but she's like, fits with you, she connects with you, and you think, okay, well, I could go chase the, my dream girl, but I have to go back down in the valley. And if I go back down in the valley, I'm gonna, I might get lost, and I'm never gonna find my way back up to this mountain, because there's no path down the mountain. I mean, my path was on the way up, but there's no path to go back. I can't retrace my steps. So if I go down, I lose this woman, and I, I take my shot at the next one. So women do the same thing. They got the, the guy who looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. He's uh, you know in a suit. He looks good. He got money. He's everything that the woman dreamed of. But he's he's this top mountain. She climbed the mountain. She found the guy. He's not as good looking. He's not as tall. He doesn't make as much money. But he's a nice guy. And he's like he's confident. He's good in bed. And he's all the he checks the boxes she wants. He's just not checking the hundred percent like peak male that she's looking for, the guy who looks like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, but now she's 27 and she's getting in the age where she knows she's going to hit her wall and not be as attractive to these other men. And even if she gets Leonardo DiCaprio, she don't even know if he'll commit to her, mm -hmm. right? So she risks going out in the valley, turning 30, 31, 32, and now her value has plummeted. So she's going to stick with her local maximum, which is that guy who's on the second highest mountain. Now, she's not going to take a guy in the valley, and that's what all these other guys being lazy are doing. They're like, oh, I want this woman, but I can't get her. It's like, dude, you're sitting in the valley. You're not even trying. Of course she doesn't want you. But if you make it, if you climb to the top of that second mountain and become the second mountain guy, that 20% guy, she's never going to leave you for the top mountain guy. It doesn't make any sense for her to do so because she's going to be kind of content with that top 20% guy because she knows even if she went for the top percent guy, she may not be able to get him. She's going to have a lot more competition. And even if she gets him, she doesn't know if she can keep him. Mm -hmm. Right? And so it's like, you know, it's, it's just kind of crazy to think that hypergamy rules this. And someone posted it in my group about this commenting that, like, women will always leave for the better man. And this is just not true. She will leave if her man isn't good enough. But if he's confident, if he's good in bed... If he fills all her needs or emotional needs, he doesn't neglect her, he fills her sexual needs, he takes care of the kids, he provides for the family, why would she leave for this imaginary fantasy dream? The only reason a woman would cheat on a man like that is because she's insecure and thinks she needs to fill the void by achieving this top 1% man, by getting her Leonardo DiCaprio, that will make her feel better about herself. So the only women I believe will cheat on a high value man who's not the cream of the crop is if she's very insecure about herself and needs to prove her, to herself that she can do that. And that's very limited and you got to be able to screen for that when you date a woman whether she's insecure or not and know the risks involved in that because she's more likely to cheat for her own ego. But she ain't cheating on the guy who's confident and good in bed and provides for the family. There's no, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. If he neglects her emotionally, if he's banging other chicks, if he's wimpy, if he like has no boundaries and she can push him over, you know, if he blows in the wind, she's going to lose respect for him and she might divorce him. Most women, I think, will just leave him. Some women will cheat. But that's why is because he lost his masculinity, he lost himself as a man. He was a pushover. She's not cheating because some other hypergamous male came along. Mm. I think hypergamy goes out the window once she's invested because it's, it's gambler's fallacy. Once she's invested, she's going to keep, keep that around as long as she sees any kind of value in that. So like from, from a probability standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, I don't think once a woman is committed to a high value man, she's, the hypergamy goes out the window as far as jumping to another level. Mm -hmm. Once that man is in the, in the top 20% of men, she ain't moving up from, if he's number 20, she don't care about number 10 or number 5 or number 1. She's sticking with number 20. Yeah. She just wants him to be elevated amongst the general population of men. That's why the answer, even we can speculate all day how much, how important hypergamy really is, how it underlies everything. But at the end of the day, really what matters is making sure that your woman respects you. And she's going to respect you if you're a confident, charismatic person. Also, the type of guy that she knows that if 
if she leaves him, he's going to be okay because exactly. he can just replace her. That's the that's number why, one. That's why it's so important to be attractive to women as a whole because that's going to be one of those things where she's going to stay with you because you still have that perception uh, or she still has a perception that you're a high value man. You'd be like, you know, that's why it's so important again to have the woman respect you more than love you because she's not going to leave you if she respects you. Exactly. Because right? she can lose that love if she loses that respect. Yeah. But this is what I tell my students and it's like when we, we, you know, we help them, they can get good really fast and they can get a girlfriend really quickly. And that's actually dangerous for them because they can get attached without developing the skill to get other women. So if they get into that relationship and they don't, they're not sure that they can get other women, they're going to get needy and desperate for her attention and attachment because they think if they lose her, they still don't have the skill. So I'm very, you know, I, I don't tell them not to if it's the right woman for them, but I'm always wary of my students getting girlfriends too quickly because it's, they're, they haven't developed a skill that no, they don't haven't. They just need to know in their hearts and minds that if she leaves, they can get a new woman the next day. And if they don't have that, they don't have that feeling. It puts strain. It's going to put strain on their relationship. Would you say the best bulwark against um, a woman cheating on you, leaving you, that type of stuff, is to become good at, at game? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, because you know, because I know how why. Knowing how and why things are going wrong, you can watch the wheels turn. You can watch things go wrong and you can fix. So most of the time is not knowing what's going on in the relationship. Knowing why she texted this or how she's doing this. So you need to be able to read the meter to know like it's a thermometer, knowing whether hot or cold and knowing where you're at if you're screwing up because you can always fix that. The longer you're with a woman, years especially, you have way more time to fix things. So if you're with a woman for three years, she ain't gonna lose respect for you in one day unless you do something really, really bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's gotta be horrible and like you gotta just be like, you know, like a guy tries to, you know, attack her and you run, like kind of thing. Like, you know, like that kind of stuff. And even that can be recovered from, but mainly she's gonna lose, if you've been with her for three years, it's gonna take like four to six months mm -hmm. for her to, to leave you and lose respect for you. Right, so you have so much time if you see her slipping to reverse that process. But if you're not aware of game and the psychology behind it and why she's doing things, you can't fix it. So that's what I teach my guys: is the why, how things are going on, what's going wrong. And this is once you know, it's it's easy to fix. You have time to fix it, and you can fix it as a man. And you always got to be aware of that. So knowing this stuff is everything. It's like seeing the matrix, being able to see everything play out. And that's how you keep a woman. And like I said, the only way that you're not going to keep a woman around if you've maintained your masculinity, maintained her respect for you, is if she's highly insecure. And you got to be screen screening that yeah. from the beginning. If you're dating a woman who has major red flags for insecurity, that's just a risk because she, her ego is dependent on validation. And so she's a risk to cheat on you to get validation. Mm -hmm. She's not going to cheat on you for hypergamy. It's going to be for validation. Yeah. So if you've eliminated women that are, they're pretty highly insecure. It's not just any ordinary insecurity. But if you're eliminating women that are highly insecure, then you just got to hold your own as a man. It's not, it doesn't matter. And if you're, and one thing is if you're, if you're nervous about the guy down the street, she'll pick up on that too. So a lot of that confidence is, being able to internalize this belief that the other guy doesn't matter. Because if she can sense that you're intimidated by this other guy, then things start to flip, right? So confidence goes a long way. Confidence is everything. And we, I have a process for developing that confidence. It's not just woo woo, be confident. But at the end of the day, it is factually correct that confidence beats everything. Mm -hmm. and you could also say too that just the, so the very fact of being the type of man who can attract other women shows that you're a socially aware, high value person. So it almost kind of feeds into the uh, both the, the hypergamous side from the subconscious and, un and unconscious mind too. And then they can rationalize and say, okay, well, this guy, because you know they're good with women, then they must also be uh, good with you know social situations, being able to uh, negotiate for better resources, things of that sort. Because the reality of the 21st century that we live in, we don't live in caveman and military times or whatever anymore. Where it's just like the biggest, buffest mother ever that can beat up everyone as the the alpha, so to speak, or the top of the dominance hierarchy. It's more so the person who is socially aware, who's intelligent, that can gather resources. 
the times have changed, well, right? Well, no. <laughs> no? The times haven't changed. We still have remnants of yes, all the biological sure. stuff. So it's tentacles. They're still involved in everything. I don't think the times... Have, I always push back on this. I don't think our times have changed as much as we think they have. As far as sexuality, we're still based in biology from thousands of years ago. Well, even, even thousands of years ago, it was still the leader of the... the sorry about that, folks. Camera cut out there. Um, so yeah, let's get back to it. So what I was going to say was, you know, even in those, you know, caveman times where, um, you know, society wasn't quite built yet, the alpha or the leaders of the tribe, so to speak, you know, they still didn't have to be like the biggest Buffix guys. Of course, they probably were, but they also needed to have leadership qualities. They needed to be able to keep the tribe together, all those types of things. So I would still argue and say that the, uh, the, the things that, uh, women are naturally attracted to are still embodied by men who have a lot of social awareness. It's not just a modern phenomenon, right? So yeah. it's still a combination of that plus the physical attributes. Well, I think it's the environment has changed. So I'm not arguing that the environment has changed. The triggers are the same, yes. right? So the triggers of social status, social power, social awareness, being a tribal leader that come from thousands of years ago still apply today, but the environments have changed where we are living more in clusters. Instead of tribals having tribes having their own territories, we're now all congregating cities. So there's a lot more overlap of social circles and social dynamics. And so it's more integrated and it's more complicated. And so the guys who are socially aware, the guys who are social leaders are the former tribal leaders, but they're navigating a new environment. And so that's where new society plays in is how do those guys navigate uh, different social structures, how do they navigate Me Too movement, how they navigate from a group they don't know for a group they do, how do they work between groups, how do they bring in new friends, all these different factors. And we should, uh, now it reminds me, we want to do a podcast on social circles and social dynamics because I can go on forever on that. But um, what we're talking about is uh, I'm a small creature. I'm not, you know, I hit the gym, but I was 5'8 and scrawny and whatever, and I was never going to be able to beat up a guy. So from a physical standpoint, even hitting the gym, I'm never going to be at the top 20, even 20% of being able to win in a fist fist fight unless I you know, go and learn some combat style techniques, which could be cool. But the idea is that I, if right now I'm going to lose a lot of one-on-one -on -one combat fights. And uh, in order to supersede that in a woman's eyes, I need to control, I need to have power, social power. And why is it so valuable? Because social power commands physical power. It's, you know, it's powerful leaders commanding militaries. It's the guy, me commanding the bouncer or someone that has my back. So when I get in a fight with a guy, which I know how to dissipate, so I don't have that happen. But if a guy wants to fight me, he ain't fighting me. He's fighting me and my friends who are bigger than him. So my friends will have my back to the end of the earth. And so I've built this social loyalty and social power for that. Because when a woman meets me, she can sense that I'm not intimidated by the big ass guy sitting next to me. So she's got to think, why? Physically, I should be intimidated by this guy who's 300 pounds, who's 6'4", who could kick my ass. And I'm not, will I'm not afraid to stand up to him if he calls me out or anything. I have confidence in my voice when I talk to him. And women, confidence works, but mainly because confidence has to come from somewhere. So it doesn't, it's not unexplained. We'll talk in the other podcast where there's an exception to that. But mainly, when she sees me confident in the face of this guy who wants to fight me, she's thinking why I'm attracted to him immensely because he's displaying this confidence. But how could he be so confident? He obviously is going to get ripped apart by this guy. And the explanation is that he's, it's not me. He's not fighting me. I command social power, which means that in that bar, whether it's a bouncer, whether it's my friends, I'm going to have two to five people come to my defense and beat the crap out of that guy. Okay? And so me being able to command that, this is not like the guy's like, oh, I'll step up for my friend. No, my friends will go to the end of the earth for me. They will beat the crap out of a guy if he dares to lay a finger on me. So it's not just like... It's not just a little bit of like, oh, I will help the guy who's, you know, smaller guy. I'll help the guy out. No, it's like blind loyalty because that's what I show to my friends. That's how I build my social power. And if we're talking about that in terms of hypergamy, the reason social status is so valuable is because I command armies socially. It's because people are always on my side. And you want to be on the winning side of a tribe, not the one-on-one. -on -one. And that ends up at the end of the day being the side that has the more resources. 
Because because here's the thing. Here here's one thing I want to ask you too. Because those are all fair points and good points that you brought up. But well, I know I know some. Can people, we can yeah, we pause yeah. before we finish? Sure. More resources uh, in 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 uh, theoretical terms because yes. because the. The, the bigger army is going to be able to take any resources they want from the smaller army. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying the ambition part comes in because we could have absolutely nothing. But if my army is bigger than yours, I'm just going to take whatever resource you have. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It really yeah. doesn't matter. The resources themselves don't matter. The size of the army matters. Yeah. So it's, the, yeah. It's so, basically the not just the resources that are currently at hand, but the potential resources, right? But it's not even thinking about that. The bigger army is just yeah. in your head automatically yeah. bigger resources. They're well, going to get them if they don't have them. The so. reason that I bring up the resources thing is because on a on a base base level the definition of hypergamy really is you know marrying up for resources right so someone who's a purist in terms of how they would define hypergamy will say and i want your opinion on this is saying okay well all it comes down to in a woman's mind is really okay it's just resources if it, in their mind it's basically just resources what has the potential for the most resources what currently has the most resources and what has the greatest likelihood of maintaining those, those yeah. resources and now was, so what would you say to to someone who's a hypergamy purist from that sense of saying that's all women are ever driven by they will uh leave you know someone who has the uh lower resources or leave for someone who would potentially have more resources you know, if they, a lot of, a lot of guys in the red pill community do believe that that is, that's just it. Yeah. You know, that, so it's, it, it's that simple. Well, I mean, what do you say it, to that? Well, we've talked about earlier and it's not, it. well, number one is we do the same. Yes. Guys do the same. We lead for the, we want the women who have the best resource, which is the best waste to, hip to waist ratio, the yep. best genetics, the one who's going to cause the least amount of drama, least depression, least psychosis. Right, we want the no most normal, fun woman to be around, who's also happens to be the most physically attractive. Mm -hmm. So resources could be DNA and genetics. Yep. She Same can thing. bear the strongest babies yeah. that will carry on your legacy exactly. and your name. So we, and for your we forget that genetics and DNA and looks also is a resource, right? Yep. Because of the what's passed on to the next generation. And then going back to what we talked about earlier, local maximums. She's not going to leave the guy. With resources for the guy who has more resources because she gets stuck in no man's land with no resources mm -hmm. right so she wants the guy who has adequate resources she's not shooting for him in the beginning but if she ends up with him she ain't leaving him mm -hmm. it's like you don't leave the safety of a house that has enough food to last for five years for a mansion that has enough to last six or seven mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. why would you leave that if there's zombies outside you gotta you gotta like find your way to this mansion that might be full with a lot of other women when you got this like house that's nice enough that has enough food to last you five years and fight off the zombies so would you still say because i i totally agree with that by the way but would you still say um because again even in that scenario with the local local maximums it's still in a sense of okay well can i get more resources elsewhere no the risks are too high therefore i'm okay with the resources here because this is reliable enough Right, but at the end of the day, it still does come down to the resources themselves. Do you still buy into that thinking of okay, well, it is kind of like a purely resources game? Like, is there something else at play where, where, no, uh, life, aside from hypergamy? Life is all about resources. It's kind of self-evident. It's kind of like the sky is blue. Like, yeah, really, like, like it's just a word for competition for things. Like. What are we competing for? We're always competing for something. Why do we have competition? Supply and demand, yep. how markets work. So the idea that we have to even describe the chase for resources as the basis for all of this is kind of ridiculous to me. It's like, oh yeah, the sky's the blue. Of course it's blue, right? It's just like, it's very evident. It's very apparent. Yeah. We chase what we want that's better than what we have. Like mm -hmm. that's not, to me, not really any kind of revelation. Yeah, it's very simple, simple, and obviously, it's, I don't even think it's debatable. Mm -hmm. We chase what's better than what we have, and then if we find good enough, we'll settle instead of risking for great. Yeah, and the best bulwark to, I would say, guarantee a woman doesn't leave you, but um, essentially that's what I'm saying. Is, is the higher us as coaches. Yeah, exactly. Higher us as coaches, so you can learn this <laughs> shit. You know, and we can delve into your specific needs and want. Yeah, um, but also. It's, it's actually just, well, you're not wrong in what you're saying because what we teach is actually just to feel 
more confident and be and exude the types of qualities of the person who is capable of getting and maintaining and building upon resources, right? Well, you have so, them become that person too. Yes, like, you have to become you that You start person. with that framework of understanding what that person is, how they are, you mm -hmm. understand how everything works, and then we just walk you through the process of actually becoming that person. Exactly. It's not just the techniques, it's not just, that just gets you rolling down the road. Yep. If you, other uh, like other, where, other places, you coaches or courses, whatever, you just learn techniques, all it does is get you through the first roadblock. Yep. It doesn't lead you down the road because, you know, I, I could teach a guy who, how to get laid overnight, but that's not going to help him keep a woman around. Nope. You know, that's not going to help him level up as far as what he wants in his life in terms of getting more attractive women. So once I have him through the door, then then we build start this process of helping him become the top 20% man in the dating world or, or whatever, you know, other worlds that you help them with. And it's a process of them becoming that, which isn't an overnight thing. It can happen rapidly for some. It can take longer for others. Um, but it's just about understanding them walking down that path. But they're actually, they're getting more resources. They're achieving that. It's not fake. It's just stretched in the beginning, like I said, to get mm -hmm. the ball rolling. And then it becomes real. That's also why the best resource that you have to, first of all, attract women in the first place, but then also just keep them is literally, yeah, it's here. To literally actually be, actually literally be a high quality person who you know, might have accomplished great things already, but again, it's more so exuding the qualities and actually being the type of person who has the potential for greatness, right? Just because you haven't achieved that greatness yet, you well, know, of course that in itself is important as well, but a smart, intelligent woman, someone who is, you know, um, you know, not an insecure person, they will see their hypergamous nature will drive them to seek out a man who possesses those qualities of someone who could potentially be great. Right, so if you're actually working on yourself to potentially be a great person, then you know you don't have to sit there worrying, oh, is my wife going to leave me? All this, all this type of stuff. Because again, at the end of the day, too, in in addition to all these things, and that's why all these things are related, right? Like part of being a high quality man is being someone who can attract a lot of women. Because if you can attract a lot of women, you're a very socially aware, adept person. If you're a socially aware, adept person, you're going to be capable of having the respect of other men, having a lot of resources, right? So all these things kind of tie together. Now, they're not all necessarily guaranteed to correlate to one another, but it's a very high likelihood that they will, right? Because, you know, random bullshit might come up still where, you know, you possess all these qualities, but you just take too much time to have these things come to fruition or, you know, life punches you in the face too many times, you get unlucky. You know, that girl, it depends on the person, but she might still stay with you because she still sees that potential because that attraction is undeniable because it's subconscious, right? Well, yeah, but it come, it really comes down to three things for you guys watching or any guys out there that want to get to this level is um, the first is that you have to believe that you can do it. Yeah. If you don't believe you can do it, you'll never accomplish it. If you have that self-doubt. So the first thing is stop, turn off the red pill channels, turn off the black pill channels, turn off the, all the garbage. And you don't have to just watch us. There are other ones out there, but find the information that lifts you up that says that you can do it if you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. Focus on that because you're not helping yourself by believing that you can't do it, right? You have to buy in that anybody can do it, even if you haven't done it yet. You have to put your faith in. This is faith. I'm a man of science, but this is faith. Leap of faith, thinking there's something out there, there's some way out there that I can do it. You know, as a guy, you're saying somewhere out there, there's a way that, that you can make this happen. And so you have to believe that you can do it or, you know, that's what coaching is, is like you have to have a student that believes they can actually achieve it. If they don't believe it, they won't get anywhere. The number two is they have to be willing to listen and adapt. If you hold your beliefs and your ways, you're never going to get anywhere. You're, if you fail with women, you're by definition wrong about all your dating beliefs. So let them go. If, if you don't let them go, you're not coachable. You're never going to learn anything, no matter if you have the greatest coach in the world. So the second part is you got to be listen, willing to listen, learn, and adapt. And I tell my guys, when I tell you to do something, you better do it if you want to get good at it. If it's, as long as it's legal, you better do it. Seriously. You better do it because you've trusted me to guide you down the right path. So stop messing around. I don't teach you anything that's disrespectful to women. I don't teach you anything that's uncomfortable or awkward for other people. That's the whole point. You gotta do it the right way. And I don't teach you anything illegal. So there's no excuse. You gotta go and do it. Grow the balls that you need to go and do it. Because I can't do it for you. And if you can do that, you're gonna find success. And then the third part is just how much work you're gonna put in, how much effort. Some guys will see it results quickly. Some guys take a little longer. 
It's not, you know, you don't want to take over your life. You have a job, you have other things going in your life. You want to go to the gym. This is not a full-time job. This doesn't take a lot of time, but it does take some kind of effort. And it's not just reading or whatever. You probably are, are if you're watching this, you're already watch, spending enough time on this that you could sign up with, with, with me and kill it by just taking this time here that, you know, it's nice to, for you that you're watching this talk, but it's kind of a waste of your time because you could be out there learning and doing this stuff and improving. So anyone that tells me they don't have enough time is, is a liar because they have the time. They're just wasting that time watching <laughs> podcasts. I love that you're here, but at the end of the day, sign up with me. But if you don't, sign up with someone and go do it. Go do this stuff if you want to get good at it. Put in that effort and we'll do more podcasts on this because you know, so a lot of guys need that kick in the butt. Nobody's but, ever, you ever heard the quote by Bruce Lee, nobody's ever earned a black belt by reading about martial arts. It's important to read on. about it, to do homework, things of that sort, but it doesn't mean shit if you don't put it into action. Say 80-20. 80-20. 80 action. Yeah, 80% 80, yeah, 80 action, 20%, you know, reading. You know? Absolutely, 80-20. Yeah, 20, yeah, 20 per, uh, what is it? Basically, um... Yeah, well, you know, 80 20. 80 20, 80 20, all day, 80 20. 80% yeah, 80, of your time needs to be talking to women, online dating, going to a cafe or bars, even if it's not your thing to go out club and go to, go to cafes, go to the mall, go talk to women. Yep. And then go on dates. And then 20% of your time. 20% of your time, of your time watching podcasts, watching YouTube, watching, talking to guys, going on forums, asking questions. That's fine. There's a place for that. But if you're ignoring the 80% of time of action, you're just wasting your time. Yep. Might as you well just take action. Might as well do something else. Learn programming or something. <laughs> Seriously, you're wasting your time if you're not going to do it. But even with programming, the best way to get pro good at programming is taking action, right? But you so see the my point. You see my point. Action. You yes. play video games, whatever action that is, it's better served than than just watching the stuff. And go out and do it. Go right now. Go today. Go to say hi to any woman. Just say one time. Say hi. That's it. You're, Homework, Mr. You might, Mr. You might, viewer, Mr. You might, viewer. You might fail at it, but that's okay. That's better than the guy who didn't even try. So, yeah. But that's hypergamy. I think that the number one thing that I want to say about hypergamy is that, yes, it exists, but quit whining and understand that you can improve your state, your, ca your class, your status. You can improve your chance of being at the top or echelon, the top 20% of hypergamy. So it's just a, it's a bunch of crap for, for, you to com for any guy to complain about it because they can overcome it. They can use hypergamy to their advantage. Yep. And I think, I find it really funny too because a lot of guys who um, are part of Red Pill and more specifically Midtow, they'll say, oh, well, you know, like to feel, find fulfillment in life rather than uh, chasing women, you should work on yourself instead. It's just such a counterintuitive statement because, you know, the best way to get women is to actually improve on yourself already, right? So those two things go together. And I that's mean, why I. Oh. Yeah, there's some truth to it. I think some are focusing on that, but it's the only part, and they're a little bit more disillusioned. I like that they're not actually as bitter as we think. They're more disillusioned, yeah. which is a difference. Yeah. But, the, but the, the problem is they say that they, it's almost implied that the two are mutually exclusive, which they absolutely yeah. are not. Yeah, if anything, they're mutually inclusive, not um, not 100%. Like one, just because you improve yourself doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to have all these bitches on your dick, you know? But, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, um, the two are definitely related, right? And that's why I still think, I truly, truly believe this, that hypergamy, again, it's just the reality of things, so why even complain about it? But exactly. also, at the same time, it's actually a good thing because it brings out the best in you. Now I remember what right? I was going to say. Sure. So, guys, you should be thankful for hypergamy because if you didn't have it, it would be communist dating where everyone was just randomly assigned a woman. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Hypergamy is just competition, yeah. supply and demand. It's a market. Yeah. Get better at it. Yeah. If hypergamy didn't exist, we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you because we get whatever women came to us. We'd be sitting back and waiting for them to come to us. That's without hypergamy, it's communism, mm -hmm. and we would just be assigned a woman. Yeah. Every man just pick a number out of a freaking that hat. Sucks. How terrible would you that might be? Might get lucky, but you probably. How won't. terrible would that be? Yeah. You ain't getting, you know, you're not getting Russian women and I'm not getting Asian women. We're getting whatever's out of the hat. <laughs> We're getting whatever comes out of the hat. I don't want to play that game. I want to play the hypergamy game because I know I can beat it. My students beat it. And same with you. Your guys will beat that hypergamy game too. That's the whole point. We love it. Yeah. Because if it didn't exist, we'd all be picking out of a hat 
whatever communist woman comes out. I like how you just and, expose both of us to the types of women we're into. Yeah, You're like me with Asian women, me with Russian women. It's why like, not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Those are our types. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, dude, that's yeah, that's that's so true, man. Spot on. I'm Spot sure on. I'll get a lot of uh, yeah. hate in the comment section from women because I said communist woman or something. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing now. I just made up some misogynistic term yeah, on the spot. But yeah, whatever. Who <laughs> cares? It's funny. But really, again, it's the the cool part is too. You only you know it's the eighty twenty rule. Pareto principle. We talk about this all the time. As long as you're in the top twenty percent of men, the top eighty percent of women are going to be coming after you, right? So again, the threshold is lower than you think. But if you're just trying to improve yourself, and you're really just taking the effort to try to get better to become really just a higher quality person and therefore a higher quality man, then the women will come. Of course, you need to still have some technical things right and um, it's it's very important to have game, like there's technical aspects to it, but a lot of that also does come from, you know, inner game, so to speak, feeling more confident and better about yourself. And, um, you know, it, just the very fact that you're taking action to become better, that's already you know, you're already on your way to getting into that top 20%. And then when you're in that top 20% range, you get most of the results. Pareto principle, right? You know? Yeah. And that's the way hypergamy is and that's the way it should be. It rewards, hypergamy rewards the highest quality men. So become a high quality man. That's the answer. Quit bitching about it. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. <laughs> I think that's good to, to good, end on that note. And I think you agree. So yeah. uh, thanks so much as always, Josh, for, for, for putting your input on this type of stuff. Hypergamy. I'm sure we'll talk about this again on the podcast because it's just such a uh, big topic that um, really underlies so much of men, men to women interaction uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but then also at, within society as a whole. So it's a very important topic to talk about. We will revisit it again for sure, uh, but those are just our, top, our, our thoughts on hypergamy uh, at the moment. So thanks again, Josh, for tuning in. Um, thank you for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next podcast. Bye. That's good. Nice. I think you need to prepare for your date. I thought of the next topic. So